No Last Jedi talk. I think we're all kind of annoyed with all the weird craze ball. Last Jedi, it's terrible. No, it's good. No, it's terrible. No, it's good talk. No, this time I'm going to go way back in time to a film I missed. And I'm super excited I finally watched today. And that is Clone Wars. <laughs> Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my review for the Clone Wars movie. I'm super excited to dive into this because I just never saw this. I don't know, something about the Clone Wars series never really called my name. I never really jumped into it and watched it, but... What is it, like two weeks ago now when my wife's family was all out, my nephews were out, they were all talking about how much they loved Ahsoka, how much they loved the Clone Wars, they loved the TV show, they love all of that, and I've had a bunch of friends tell me the best thing that came out of the prequels was the Clone Wars movie and the Clone Wars series, and then the other series, Rebels and all that stuff, so I was like, okay, fine. So I was bored today, the day I sat down to record this, and I thought, let me just check this out. There was the Clone Wars movie on Netflix, so I hit play, and I was enthralled beginning to end. I just thought it was a really, really solid film. It had a fantastic story. It had great characterizations. In short, it's what I wanted the prequels to be. This made Anakin out to be the hero I wanted to see Anakin be so that when he made his turn over the dark side, it was just all that more painful. Now, this one, I don't feel like you saw a lot of light side and dark side fighting inside of Anakin, but what you did get to see... It's kind of everybody's snide comments about Anakin, like Obi-Wan coming to this planet in the beginning, or was it in the middle? Somewhere in there, he was like, oh, look, there's a firefight. That's where I'm going to start looking for Anakin, because, you know, he's normally right in the middle of that. So everybody kind of has their snide attitudes and snide remarks towards Anakin that, you know, he's looking for trouble, and he's always in trouble, and he's always in some sort of fight, and he's looking for a fight. So I thought that was really interesting, because to me, that kind of shows that pull of the dark side, that he is rebellious towards the council while trying to be faithful to and obedient to the council but he just kind of has this fiery spirit inside and so he finds himself in the middle of these firefights and not always completely obeying the council or maybe obeying the council but his own interpretation of obeying the council so they did a really good job characterizing Anakin that way and making him a very likable character and something that made Anakin very likable on this is introducing Ahsoka who I knew nothing about until this movie, and now I find her to be one of the coolest characters, and I'm actually really even more ticked off at the prequels that she was not included in the live-action movies because she is just an incredible character. She's a young Padawan, and so I guess Anakin just assumed she was going to be assigned to Obi-Wan, so she comes to this planet where they're having this massive battle at the beginning, and Anakin finds out she's assigned to him, that he's assigned to be her master. And he's like, no, a Padawan will just slow me down. I can't do that. I'm not a trainer. And, and Obi-Wan's like, hey, it's part of the Jedi responsibility to train up the next generation. And even Yoda is like, you know, this is a good thing because for Anakin to be a Jedi, this is a test that he's got to pass. And that is to have a Padawan that he's got to train up to be a Jedi. And so what was really cool, though, about who Anakin got stuck with is Ahsoka just has the same fiery spirit that Anakin has. And so it was really kind of cool to see people of a like nature and a like spirit working together where they're like mirror images of each other. So, I mean, she's ready for a fight. She's gung-ho for a fight. I mean, she's kind of just jumping in. And so she's a little immature and a little inexperienced. And so she jumps into things ahead of what Anakin is saying and so gets a little bit of trouble. But at the same time, she seems to pull it off most of the time and saved Anakin a few times. A few times Anakin had to save her. But the point is, is, is those two together it made Anakin more likable because you see him really starting to like his Padawan like he really likes Ahsoka you see him start to feel like the way a father would for his daughter and so he's starting to be protective of her he's starting to care about her and he went from no I don't want a Padawan to wow I like your spirit yes I want to train you up and so you get to see that transformation inside of Anakin and it just makes you like Anakin all the more and then Ahsoka's just awesome man and she's going around I mean my gosh for an inexperienced Padawan she is pretty flipping awesome she goes into the fray with absolute courage man and lasers shooting all around her she just lightsaber like a baseball bat oh my gosh I love it so it was really cool to watch those two together and to see those two interact and to see Anakin teaching her and, and how she's willing to learn from him, but at the same time she wants to improv and do her own thing. So that, that was just really cool to see. The other character that was really cool was Ventress. I think I'm saying her name right. The assassin that is being trained by uh, Dooku. And 
she is an incredible villain. This is another one that I'm upset didn't make the live action films because she had the double bladed lightsaber like Darth Maul. And so when Obi-Wan and her fight towards the end of that movie, it was just incredible to watch them just, it was incredible. Like I just totally enjoyed this movie. I also enjoyed the plot and the kind of moral conundrums that brought up because I mean, Jabba the Hutt, we know is a gangster and he's a bad person, but he owns all these shipping routes. And so now the Republic wants those shipping routes. And so Jabba the Hutt's son has been kidnapped. So if we go save the son, then we earn his trust and he can let, you know, the clones use these shipping routes. And that'd be a huge help to us. But then you also have the separatists that are working really hard to get the same routes. But then in the end, it, does it matter? Because Palpatine is running the Republic that he ends up turning into an empire. And so is it all futile anyway? So it's really interesting, like as I'm watching it and I'm thinking through all of these things. So it was a really good movie. And then I ended up watching the first two episodes of the show and it's a really good show. So I'm hooked. So it's something that for whatever reason I was trying to avoid, but now I'm hooked. So I think I'm gonna give uh, Clone Wars probably a solid B plus because I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to go out and buy this and own it and stuff like that. But I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it, how much I enjoyed the story, the characterizations and everything they did with it. So I think I, I'm just giving that a B plus and I'm really excited to dive into the show and see all the places that that goes, you know, right before we get to episode three. So, and we'll see if this changes how I think about the prequels, because I'm still not a fan of the prequels, but man, this story coming out of it is pretty darn epic. So if you saw Clone Wars, the movie and the show, what did you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian and hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified the very next time I drop a movie review like this, theological analysis, or anything else I do here. Hey, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I've been doing the IGTV thing on Instagram. I've been going through and reviewing the Mission Impossible movies, and those are kind of my video notes. And so I'm going to go back to those and review them after I see Fallout and rank them all worst to best right here on this channel. So you can check out some of my Mission Impossible reviews and other things I've done on IGTV by following me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania.